Sims half. What a reaction from King. Absolutely fabulous. Nails it into the first corner. Followed through there by Keenan Rue as well. Pickering coming on strong down the back straight initially. Round the outside into turns three and four with Holder there. Creeping round the inside. But the Ipswich Witches have hit the front here with sensational start initially from Danny King. Yeah, great start from the Ipswich boys, but Rue's now getting under a little bit of pressure from Josh Pickering. He's building his speed up on the outside. But this is a fantastic result for Ipswich if you can stay like this. Yeah, strong start here. Maximum score on the cards because Holder having problems. He's tailed off at the back. He'll be making a few tweaks to his setup. He seems to have some sort of issue. Bike not working as he would wish. But out in front, Danny King's bike is no uh, holds barred from him. He's down the back straight for the final time. Keenan Root coming through strongly as well into second place. Big 5 1. The Ipswich Witches responding to the 4-2 by the Sheffield Tigers in the previous race. And they now hold a lead, moving on to 11 points to 7. Heat number 4. Here we go, green lights on, tapes are up. Dawes made a fabulous start from gate number 1. No, excuse me, it's Hume. Oh. Hume's made a great start. And Doyle has just clouted him in the first corner. And both of the Ipswich boys go down there. Nasty looking crash there. Uh, Doyley lifted heavily from the start there and it sort of got pinned between two riders and looks to cut back and yeah, you, as you said, Daniel pulled a huge locker and, and Doyley really had nowhere to go but into him, so nasty, nasty looking incident. What a racing prospect this is. Grand final, first leg here in Vauxhall Heath and Ipswich. Heath 13, don't take your eyes off of it, tapes are up. And I tell you what, Lambert just missed that. Saifutinov gets it. Doyle's alongside him. What a result this would be for the home team. Unbelievable that. Now Doyle and Saifutinov lock together. One and two in E13. Lambert's back in third place. Lawson missed it as well. What a result this would be. Oh, oh lift there. Huge <laughs> lift there from Evelyn in second place. But great result here for the Ipswich boys, good start from the boat, like you said, I think, I think Robert twitched a little bit just before the tapes went up and, and he's got his work cut out to come and catch those two boys now. Indeed he has, he's trying awfully hard, but Jason Doyle and Sai Putinov dominating heat number 13, right from the moment the tapes went up, they're into the last lap, fabulous performance here once again from the Ipswich boys, this pairing have been absolutely fabulous throughout 2023. And what a moment it is, a grounder on their feet. Huge 5-1, back-to-back 5-1s. And that lead all of a sudden moving on to 16 points. 16 points up with two races to go tonight. Looking set to finish the night on a 5-1 and remain unbeaten throughout the evening into the last lap. Doyle and then will side footing off. Now Pickering's pulled up, some sort of a mechanical issue for him. Disappointment for Pickering. Lambert through in the third place. Ipswich fans are lifting. What a night that is, and what a turnaround in the last eight races. It really has been a meeting of two halves for the home team. Struggled earlier on when it was very tight indeed. But the longer the night's gone on, the better they've got. And a 5 1 and heat number 15 is just what they were looking for. And as I say, their top two have been outstanding this evening. And their lead is now 54 points to 36. So an 18-point lead that uh, they will have going into Allerton on Thursday night. And that's exactly what they achieved against the Bellevue Aces here in the semi-final. Brilliant result for the home team, Ollie. Yeah, great result for Ipswich. And uh, I think it's... With a lead like that, it makes Thursday so interesting. I think if it had been closer, uh, I would have fancied Sheffield's chances, but I, I, I wouldn't like to call it now. You know, this is one of the tracks that need to be uh, seriously looked into, you know, like uh, they complain about the Grand Prix in Tedero, but, uh, you know, Tedero is like uh, 10 times better than uh, and this track, what we had to ride on tonight. That's um, a bit of a joke, really, but, um, yeah, and also the referee uh, needs to... Um, Relook his uh, thinking about decisions, and uh, yeah, I just had a quick word with him, and uh, and I said, uh, "Are you in Sheffield?" He said, "Yes." So I said, uh, "If um, you know, I have uh, contact in the first corner with somebody, and that person falls off, I'll be back in a rerun of all four because apparently uh, the rules are or 
someone told him that any incident on uh, the first bend uh, means that all four riders are back. And I feel that's a little bit wrong, um, especially when uh, two of the Ipswich riders um, came down in one race and, uh, and no one was excluded. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, you know, one of them, which uh, it's a bit frustrating when, when things don't go your way. But um, I feel uh, once we go on a good track in Sheffield, uh, we can uh, bring it home. Yeah, I think the track was challenging. I think the weather's played its part. There's no question there was plenty of grip on the track and it was a bit bumpy. Um, same for both teams. Uh, he's a top quality rider, hasn't had the night he was looking for, so some frustration there. I, I have some sympathy about the Heat 4 incident. I think the home team were a, a little fortunate there with Daniel Hume making that mistake. But. Um, yeah, he was quite forthright. I think yeah. he's the adrenaline's going and he wanted to do better than he had done. Yeah. And